Secretary has warned that failing to ease an arms embargo in Syria could lead to extremism. William Hague is trying to persuade his EU counterparts of the need to lift restrictions on the supply of weapons to rebels. There is a difference over uh, what it's appropriate now for the EU to do. Uh, in our view, it's important to show that we are prepared to amend our um, arms embargo uh, so that the Assad regime gets a clear signal that it has to negotiate seriously. Uh, therefore, for us, uh, amending the embargo is, is part of supporting the, the diplomatic work and trying to bring about a political solution. Uh, we also have to think about what is happening to people in, in Syria. How long can we go on? Uh, with people having every weapon that's ever been devised dropped on them, while most of the world denies them the means to defend themselves. Well, that meeting of EU foreign ministers is getting underway in Brussels. Sky's Europe correspondent Robert Nisbet is there for us. Uh, Robert, uh, every week the British position at least gets clearer and clearer, doesn't it? That's right. And together with France, you remember, of course, it was the UK and France that also led the diplomatic push within Europe uh, during uh, the uprising in Libya as well. And the two countries have been standing together uh, over their uh, plan for Syria to end the impasse in Syria. Of course, the conflict now been going on for over two years. What they believe is that it's necessary to put weapons in the hands of the moderate opposition in order to create a credible opposition force in order to force uh, the regime to the negotiating table and that avenue has been partially cleared by a suggestion by the US and Russia uh, for a peace conference to be held in Geneva uh, next month and there is some indication that Damascus is ready to send a representative there. So what you have around the table in the EU today are several countries that are worried that if we change uh, the terms of this arms embargo that could jeopardize those peace talks uh, in Geneva. Uh, because weapons could find their hands, uh, find their way into the hands of extremists uh, who are operating in Syria, including one group uh, called Jabhat al-Nusra, which is affiliated and has sworn allegiance to al-Qaeda. Of course, there are UN resolutions preventing uh, any uh, countries from allowing weapons uh, to get into the hands of al-Qaeda. So that is where the opposition to these plans uh, is resting. And there are a number of countries that do oppose Britain and France, Finland, Sweden, Netherlands, the Czech Republic and Austria. So it seems unlikely that the terms of uh, that arms embargo will change, but they have to make some kind of decision, Andrew, and that's because the package of embargoes is due to expire at the end of this week. And so if they want to have new EU sanctions uh, against Syria, they have to be agreed over the next few days. Indeed, Robert, thanks very much indeed. Robert Nisbet there in Brussels for us. And while those foreign ministers are talking, uh, the Syrian army continues its offensive on Qusair, uh, with Hezbollah fighters now reportedly backing soldiers loyal to President Assad. Our Middle East correspondent Sam Kiley now reports from neighboring Lebanon. <laughs> A lucky escape for a rebel. But Syrian government forces are close to overrunning Qusair with the help of fighters from Lebanon's guerrilla movement Hezbollah. Sunni refugees arrive every day in Arsal, fleeing intense fighting a few miles across the border. The refugees flee down this road through an ungoverned border. It's on tracks like this that the Free Syrian Army and the Hezbollah Shia fighters from Lebanon are both infiltrating into Syria. This is just a few miles inside Syrian territory. But the tragedy for the region is that now Lebanese Sunni and Lebanese Shia are pitted against each other inside Syria as part of its civil war. Rebel fighters, mostly Sunni Muslims, held their own against Assad's forces for months. They say Hezbollah, a Shia movement, turned the tide against them. When the Syrian army and the Lebanese Hezbollah went in and started arresting men and children, raping the women, we got weapons and started defending ourselves, our honor. This Shia Lebanese farmer's land was hit by a Syrian rebel missile in revenge, wounding three workers. People talk of the contagion from Syria's civil war, and this is physical proof that the civil war is spreading. This rocket landed a few days ago, fired from inside Syrian territory, probably 
by the rebels in revenge for the Hezbollah participation on the other side of the Syrian war against them and for the Assad regime. Ordinary people inside Lebanon now living in fear that that war is going to spread into their farmsteads. We met with pro-regime fighters from Syria near Hermel, inside Hezbollah-dominated North Lebanon. They denied any connection to Hezbollah. We were not trained by anyone. My cousin got killed. They put him in a threshing machine and he got cut to pieces. That's what made me start fighting and killing. Both sides have committed atrocities inside Syria. How long before the killing spreads in earnest to Lebanon? Sam Kiley, Sky News in the